Hello, I am Quinny. Welcome to the channel. In this video today, guys, I'm going to be going through all the movers and shakers from the transfer window that were involved in my club. How have I activated some new options, some new territories with some of these cards I had anyway? Just going through their natural career progression and transferring across the globe. Thankfully, guys, when you identify targets at the beginning that you're happy to carry on through their career journey. These January transfer windows and the summer transfer windows can be really exciting and really open up uh, your club and your gallery to new SO5 and market opportunities. As always, guys, if you laugh, you learn, you like something, whatever, please do like, subscribe and share and retweet and all that good stuff. Stay out of trouble and let's get stuck into it. <laughs> So we'll start off in Asia and first of all, China tip here, the, the Thailand prince that he is, has got a monumental transfer to the big boys in Japan, Kawasaki Frontal. So this is a little kid I picked up ages ago, he's done virtually nothing for me in SO5 the entire time, but this move to Kawasaki really activates him for me in terms of what I can use him for in global as well as in Asia. And who knows, if his scores go off and they take off like Matoma and Morita and all these other guys, then uh, he could be worth a pretty, pretty penny come the start of the Asian season. Now, Joel Chima Fujita was uh, my first ever one of 100 rookie rare card. I was really excited to get him. He did really good in J2 the season before Vortis got promoted and I was really excited for last year. Unfortunately, he never really got that many appearances until it was like the end of the season and wow, did he shine. Subsequently, his form has resulted in a transfer to Yokohama F Marinos into the CFG, the City Football Group. So that's a rookie card that I'm absolutely buzzing to be taken into next season. 100% for U23, maybe a wee bit of Asia or a wee bit of global. But for the Asian region, because I have downsized it so much, I didn't have much activity. I actually had a lot of outgoings if anything. But these two guys doing domestic transfers has actually strengthened my position in Asia quite considerably. Now when it comes to Champion America, it's a wee bit of a mixed tail. So Lewis Morgan has left Miami and went to New York Red Bulls. So again, I've got a wee bit of a Red Bull thing on the go in the club. So that works for me. And I think Morgan could really kick on next year and recapture that form that we've seen in the very first MLS season on So Rare. So I actually think Lewis Morgan's going to become much more of a SO5 weapon for me this season than he was last year quite comfortably. Ezekiel Barco, the man that is... And I got the shirt for and everything, has moved to River Plate. I don't know what that means. Keeping him in America, which is good, the main worry for Barco or for these exciting U23 Champion America cards is that they come to Europe and they become nerfed, you know. So Barco might become a wee bit nerfed because of rotation, but I do see him as a key piece in any team. He's a highly sought after Argentinian Olympic winner as much as a few other different things. So I would like to think he's going to get into the best team. The only thing I'm going to be worried about is rotation. So I'll be watching Liverpool play in the Argentinian league now a lot more closely as a result. Matt Turner going to Arsenal is going to be crap in the off-season and we're just going to bide in our time until that happens. And Sebastian Leger, again, a domestic transfer, moving from the Galaxy and moving to Revs who just want to support our shield and are really strengthening their team this year. I think it's going to be an incredible move. So that's two super rares and two midfielders all in the midfield section of that Asian and America compliment that have had significant transfers that have greatly them up and their SO5 utility for me certainly for the coming season. Now when it comes to Europe again I had a lot of movers and shakers now particularly a lot of incomings. Now when I look at Challenger Europe which is typically a region that I negate it's very much a region that I don't really spend much time or effort on. We had an influx of Japanese talent into the Scottish Premier League and directly into Celtic, which I kind of bought all those guys in advance of. So I'm not really, you know, those are transfers that have benefited my club, certainly, but they're not ones that I'm like, oh, I had this guy for ages. You know, they were ones I kind of more chased down and acquired. But it's not just the Japanese lads. We also had Taylor Harwood Bellis cancel his loan at Anderlecht and get a new loan through the championship with Stoke, where he gets 46 league matches. Unfortunately, half the season is ran, but he's still going to get a lot more fixtures and hopefully he gets an extended loan into the championship for next season. That would be beautiful for a U23 super rare defender. Milton Valenzuela has also moved. He is another super rare U23 defender I've got who has moved into challenger europe into the swiss league with lugano so i was really not expecting that balance well i've been an mls cup winner with columbus crew i wasn't expecting him to number one let me down so bad like he did last year and number two i thought he might have moved to south america rather than the swiss league but hey ho we also had koki machida moving into union uh, rsug 
And I um, cannot wait to see him get into the team, the Japanese Rolls Royce that he is. Jesus Medina, who's left New York. Again, another super rare I've got a jersey for. <laughs> and he's went to Moscow with CSKA to potentially replace Vlasic. I think that's the kind of spot he's looking to fill. And then Yusuf Baji has been reassigned to a Belgian team after his loan in France hadn't really kicked off. So my challenger compliment, guys, has gained to four, four super rares from ones that I'd had already. And uh, a good couple of rares as well. And then when you add in the Celtic lads, I feel a lot more stronger in Challenger Europe. And it's maybe a region I need to buckle up my ideas and get a proper defence sorted. But in Champion Europe, this is where some of the best stories lie. Now, I actually look at Illich, totally escaped. I mean, look at Illich is the brother of Ivan Illich, who plays at Verona. And he did okay at 20 last year. Hasn't played at all um, since I bought his fucking super rare. And he has been redeployed by City Football Group. He is now at Trois in the Ligue 1. So I'm hoping I've got another super rare midfielder, also U23, that can maybe come into the four. Kevin Paredes, my one of a hundred rookie card, has moved to Wolfsburg and I think he could be a little dark horse for the second half of the year. And then Trippier and Fernand Torres, two of my very early purchases. And again, with both of them, you know, it's very easy to map out some obvious career trajectories. Kieran Trippier, Coming from Atletico Madrid, where does he go next? He's not going to be going to Bayern Munich or Juventus or anything like that. And I said at the time, I would even take him going to Burnley when I bought him. But going to Newcastle is just as good. He's going to be the starting right back. He's already been touted as captain material. And for me, I think I'm going to get the trip here that I had in my first season on So Rare in Champion Europe back. Now he's at Newcastle playing every week and, you know, being like the, they're kind of Beckham on the right, you know, almost. And Ferran Torres, I was buzzing when the City transfer went through. I bought him when he was a Valencia player. And I managed to get some good churn out with him at City, but Pep Roulette is a bit of a killer. And I'm hoping Javi at Barca is going to have him as a nailed on number one first choice. I like he very much is under Luis Enrique at Spain. So I really feel like all of these transfers have really made me stronger without doing anything. You know, a lot of these, I didn't really discover them until I started getting direct offers and stuff like that. So I always think this is a good opportunity to take stock of the club. You know, where's my strength? This will be what you're doing at home as well. If you've had cards transferred around, oh crap, that guy was my key Asian midfielder who's now moved to Europe or maybe it's vice versa. Or that guy I was really looking for, he's moved. Who would the number two target be? And because um, these transfer windows, some of them can go against you and they really go off plan. And, you know, I've had to experience that firsthand myself. But when you get these nice sneaky ones where they do pay off, you can come out the window actually much the better off having done no trading activity. So I'm very excited for the couple of months coming forward. I want to know about from you guys, who were the January transfer windows with so rare cards that really caught you by surprise? Who were the ones that were in your club and your lad did not see him moving up or did not see him becoming a number one keeper or getting a big transfer or whatever it might be? Let me know in the comment section down below. I can't wait to see and find out what they are. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe and share and retweet and all that good stuff, guys. Stay out of trouble and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.